How's it going guys? Welcome to another video. I know it's been a little while, been a little busy with Thanksgiving and just work getting super busy, but we are back today. We're gonna to be talking about some cool stuff with your computer and why it gets so darn hot. What is the biggest issue with computers? Speed is typically the first stat to come to mind when thinking of any computer from your phone, a console, TV, or a laptop. They all share similar components and some are faster than others. But the real limiting factor in all these devices is heat. Most people already know computers and other electronic devices for that matter produce heat. A few moments later. Just from holding your phone or laptop for a few hours, you can feel the heat from the device's chassis. But what is causing this heat? How do we get rid of it and why is it restricting performance? Let's start with the cause. For those of you who knew everything I said thus far, you may not have thought that deep into it. The two main things that produce heat in mobile electronics will be the battery and the processors. And funnily enough, it doesn't really matter which one we discuss because both of them have one common heat producing flaw and that is resistance. Specifically, resistance to the flow of electricity. Whenever electricity flows across a conductor, some of the energy is converted into heat and doesn't actually make it all the way to its destination. This is due to the electrons colliding with other atoms as they move through the conductor. Each time an electron hits another atom, it causes resistance to the motion and it generates heat. The heat then causes the atoms to move a bit more, kind of like they're vibrating. Then this causes a domino effect because now that they're moving more, they're bumping into more and that's causing more heat which causes them to move more. So it's kind of a turning circle of events here that causes more and more heat to be produced. Ah yes, quick little intervention here guys. If you have not already subscribed, please do so. As you saw before there, I am at 19.7 thousand. I'm really trying to get to 20,000 subscribers before the end of the year. So if you enjoyed this video thus far, consider subscribing and I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Let's get back to the video. The only theoretical way for electrical flow to produce no heat would be to have a material that had no resistance. The closest we can get are what we call superconductors, and they are materials cooled to absolute zero and offer almost no resistance. But since we can never actually get to absolute zero, which is about negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit, we can never get to a perfect resistive free conductor. Since these inefficiencies in the transfer of electricity will always exist, we will always need to find ways to move heat away from the components to avoid damaging them. A lot of this is done passively. If it's your phone or a tablet, it will be designed to transfer all the heat from the chips or battery to the case of the device and the heat will escape to the outside of the device. In larger devices, they will use fans to actually push the hot air out of the areas and in most of water coolers, the heat is first transferred to the water in the water cooler. The water is then transfers the heat to a radiator of metal fins and air is blown through those metal fins taking the heat away. If the device can't transfer this heat away fast enough, what it'll do to protect itself is to slow down to avoid damaging any hardware. This is known as thermal throttling. If a chip gets too hot, it can actually destroy transistors and physically warp the silicone or metal layers inside the chip and completely destroy paths that data flow through. So in the end, you have two choices basically. You need to get components that are more efficient so they use less power to do the same work and hence produce less heat in the process or you need cooling solutions that are robust enough to move this heat away from the components fast enough to where they don't have to thermal throttle. Thanks for watching again, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you had any questions, leave them below in the comments and please stay tuned for my next video. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you all in the next one.